On June 12, 2016, I woke up like any other Sunday morning and, like any other millennial, instinctively checked my phone. I immediately saw two words splashed across news outlets and social media, Orlando and shooting. My first thought was, oh, it must be about the shooting that happened last week. So I shrugged, wrapped a rainbow handkerchief around my neck, and traversed the few blocks that separated my apartment from the start of the Los Angeles Pride Parade. It was then and there, surrounded by a sea of fellow LGBTQ marchers, surrounded by family, that it became common knowledge that a very similar celebratory crowd of vibrant young people had just hours before been gunned down at Pulse nightclub in what would be called the worst mass shooting in modern US history. I realized throughout the following week as my friends posted eulogies for victims who they knew in the massacre that the degrees of separation between these events and me don't exist anymore. In fact, I wondered if they ever existed at all. And it dawned on me that the longest, most influential relationship I never knew I had in my life is with mass shootings. These tragedies have been brutally effective in shaping my worldview. So I, I don't want to speak on this topic as some self purported expert like you'll see flooding your feeds, but from more of a sincere experiential perspective. I can uh, remember exactly where I was and what I was doing for every major massacre in my lifetime. And more often than not, the victims and the perpetrators were around my age. I am stuck in a, a cyclical pattern of abuse in this relationship, but it wasn't always like this and it has gotten much, much worse. When I was five years old, a man crashed his pickup truck into a chain restaurant called Luby's about an hour and a half from where I lived and shot and killed over 20 people. My father, to calm my fears, recounted an infamous school shooting that had happened in the 1960s as we drove past the clock tower at the University of Texas. He pointed at it and reassured me, that was the last time something bad like this happened around here. These things don't happen often, so don't be scared. Little did he know, at the time, that he had only lived through around 20 US mass shootings before I was born. By today, I've lived through over 100 and counting, and it all began at Columbine. I was 13 years old, and I can vividly remember sitting in front of my television set in my living room and watching the news replay the scenes of countless students running out of the school with their hands on their heads. Teenagers my age were dangling from broken windows, trying to escape. Columbine changed everything, and as the adults argued politics, we kids actually went through a massive tonal shift when it came to our perspective on our peers and our culture and security, and that's when I grew paranoid. Because our parents had wars and we had Columbine. I remember schools installing metal detectors at their entrances, and I remember that it became a common, sick, practical joke for some idiot to call a bomb threat just to watch everyone get evacuated. I remember rock music and video games and even the internet being blamed, and if you wore a trench coat, you were a killer. We were very quick and eager to turn on one another. Everyone debated about who or what was at fault, and if history has taught us anything, there was no easy answer. Kids were dead, and nothing was done. And then 9-11 happened, and our generation went from cautiously skeptical to absolutely terrified. If Columbine ignited our fear as young citizens, then 9-11 defined it to be rampant, righteous, and unending. And why not? We were scared. We wanted answers, but instead of reaching for a common goal, we split ourselves in two. And every conversation you have, every fight online you'll see in the comments below, and every election year we witness this endless back and forth as more people die and less resolutions are reached. Years later, while I was attending film school at the University of Southern California, I was two weeks away from publicly premiering a short film, which had already wrapped, when the deadliest attack at that time happened on the opposite coast, on a campus much like mine. And in some twisted sense of timeliness, my short film was a graphic critique of school shootings. I remember mother of one of my friends walked up to me and remarked, you should watch what you make since it looks like your kind are prone to violence. Virginia Tech, like any other massacre involving a wide array of players from different backgrounds, whether it was racial, religious, or cultural, brought forth an ugliness that directly affected me for the first time. And as we mourn the dead, it struck me that every time that this happens, it not only opens up an opportunity to advance personal and political agendas, it becomes top priority for most of us to do so. And yet again, kids were dead, nothing was done. We have Omaha, Binghamton, Fort Hood twice. Fort Hood in the same town as that Luby's cafeteria that was shot up in my childhood. Schools, malls, churches, post offices, military bases, a grocery store parking lot in Tucson. And then a movie theater in Aurora during a midnight screening of The Dark Knight Rises. Where was I? Waiting to attend a midnight screening of The Dark Knight Rises. We all could have been those victims, excitedly waiting to watch a blockbuster on opening night. No one was safe. And then later that year, over 20 people, the majority being children who were in the first grade, were shot and killed at Sandy Hook. Our little brothers and sisters, our own children, gunned down. My gut reaction was, well, now things will definitely have to change. But it did not. Little kids were dead and nothing was done. Santa Monica, Santa Barbara, 
Marysville, Umpqua, Charleston. I apologize if I'm forgetting some, but there's just too many to count. So many that I, becoming so used to turning from passionate rage to desensitized resignation on a dime, I only shrugged. I screamed, and then I shrugged, and then I forgot. Our interconnectedness, not only as a nation, but also as an international community, the internet, social media, and bullet holes are like the connected dots that link our generation beyond each other's shores. Paris, my second home, where my mother has lived for over 17 years, was hit by a series of unfathomable terrorist attacks. And my immediate bleak thought was, my mother is dead. Thankfully, she wasn't harmed, but we have come to such a low point as a global society where we assume the absolute worst because it's how we already view one another as human beings. And then less than a month later, San Bernardino happened and my mother returned the favor and had to call me to see if I was okay. Our entire office on Sunset Boulevard heard the sirens driving eastward to San Bernardino less than an hour away. And in the following week, we'd hold a security meeting on what to do in an active shooter situation. What was once video games and trench coats has morphed into the red flag du jour for politicians who have ensured, especially with our upcoming election, that we are a country solely operating on our fear. We have let the politicians and talking heads and online forums dictate a conversation that our generation needs to have about our role in the fight against violence. We grew up on these mass shootings, the victims, and unfortunately the shooters are people we all personally know. Orlando provided a spotlight on a real issue. This disconnect between those who write the narrative and those who are actually living it. Most of our leaders are not what the victims were, primarily LGBTQ, Latinx, black, and young. In fact, many, many a politician aim to marginalize those groups today. We are passionate and overeducated, but desensitized and underrepresented, and thus we have become divided, just like the generations before us. But instead, we need to consider shutting the fuck up for a second and actually doing something about it. The patrons of Pulse were targeted because of who they were. They were queer people of color, and you as millennials out there all know and love someone from those backgrounds, and not all politicians do. It's fine to share their speeches and your opinions, even about this very video, but posting in the infinite soapbox that is the internet is like prayer without action. Contact your elected officials because eventually we're going to become those elected officials. So merely shrugging at politics instead of actively participating in it will not change the game. Let's get up all in their business because if Orlando has taught us anything, it's that they need to know that we cannot watch any more of our friends and loved ones die. And I'll be damned if kids who are watching this right now will grow up to become another statistic because we blindly join a system that loves to argue about problems but refuses to produce actual results. Mass shootings, they have been my longest, most influential relationship. Yes, but from this moment on, it will be I who defines it. And when I look back on June 12, 2016, I will not only remember the deaths of the innocent, but what we did to finally make a change. And finally to the LGBT community, know that you are brave and that you are strong and loved and that we are with you.